you guys are having a fabulous day today. We are busy in the garden the last couple days. Uh, planted, I've got onions planted, I've got radishes planted, I have cabbages planted, I have turnips planted. We are busy, we got stuff going. And um, hope you guys are doing something. Hey, listen, if you need seeds right now, you need to go check out over at clearwatervalleyfarms.com. They are the seed company that I like to promote because when all of the COVID garbage was going down, they weren't telling their employees that you have to get the or else. <laughs> Unlike some companies in the Ozarks who do. So if you're interested in some seed, uh, seeds for this year's garden, check out clearwatervalleyfarms.com. They're running a sale right now, 15% off your order. Uh, coupon code is on the screen. If you want that, go over to clearwatervalleyfarms.com. I don't get any kickbacks for promoting them. I just like a family-based business, and I know it's time to buy seeds. I got my seeds, and we're getting stuff in the ground. So now's the time to be doing it. Garden, garden, garden. Um, let's jump into an article today. This is why you don't name... <laughs> You're farm animals. You just don't do it, folks. You just don't do it. All right, let's get into the article. From the New York Post, I gave my goat to the state fair and they barbecued it. <laughs> you know this is going to be good. This is just going to be good. Starting off, they got her goat literally. A California woman sold her daughter's pet goat to her local county and district state fair, but now she's suing them after they allegedly slaughtered and barbecued it. <laughs> Jessica Long purchased Cedar, the beloved pet goat. If you have farm animals that you title your beloved, that's right off the bat. Big mistake. You're going all downhill from there. The beloved pet goat in April 2022 for her nine-year-old daughter who cared for the farm animal every day, reported the Sacramento Bee. After deciding to enter Cedar into the Shasta District Fair's livestock auction, the daughter desperately wanted him back, leading Long to steal the goat. <laughs> in the process, it prompted a frenzy involving local officials and sent sheriffs on a 200 mile, 200 mile wild goose chase, make that goat chase to find and retrieve the precious pet. Precious to who? Because if I'm the one ordering the goat for dinner, it's precious to me just as much as it is to her. Long is now suing the Shasta Sheriff's officials, Shasta County, and the Shasta, is it, am I saying that right, Shasta, Shasta? District Fair and other defendants they believe are involved and is asking for actual, general, and punitive damages according to court documents obtained by the Sacramento Bee. What happened here is an abuse of power and an incredible waste of taxpayer resources. <laughs> The goat is tax. Okay. Vanessa Shakib, Long's lawyer, told the Post in an emailed statement, government officials escalated a purely civil dispute into a sham criminal pursuit. So I guess here is the girl with her pet goat that soon after became the barbecue. The lawsuit was originally filed in August 2022, but amended in March of this year. Police officers improperly declared themselves judge and jury and disposed of a little girl's family pet in violation of her due process rights. Shakib continued to the post, officials in the state of California surely have more pressing matters to attend to than a publicly funded 500-mile joyride to illegally seize a little girl's goat. When contacted by the post, the Shasta, Shasta County Sheriff's Office responded simply, unfortunately, due to pending litigation, we are unable to comment. In June of last year, Long decided to intercede into the Shasta District Fair's junior livestock auction, which sells animals solely for use as meat. Folks, let me get this straight. You entered your pet goat into a county fair, the livestock auction of the county fair that primarily and only uses those animals for meat production. The fair's brochure strictly states that there are no exceptions. So the problem goes back to what we've talked about often on this channel, an issue with reading comprehension. On June 25th, Cedar was sold to a representative of California State Senator Brian Dale for a whopping $902, according to the Sacramento Bee, of which $63.14 was supposed to go to the state fair and $838.86 to the GOAT's owners. Now, if that seems like a lot to you, it is. Okay, so this is how it works in my county. We have a county fair, okay? We're a very, very rural county, okay? And what happens is people submit their animals to that county fair 
And again, I've done this a number of times. Now, I've never gotten to a point where um, the livestock auction goes on. There's different rules for different parts of the auction and different parts of the fair. Depending on where you enter your animal, those rules will apply to those sections, okay? And a lot of times, you're going to get people like banks and hardware companies and different businesses in the area, in the county, or even, you know, national, like McDonald's even. And they're going to sponsor part of that fair as a way to get their name on billboards and stuff throughout the fair, you know, fairgrounds. And what they do is they put up extraordinary amounts of money. And what they're doing is really paying for advertising. They don't care about the goat. They don't care about the sheep or the cow or the chicken or whatever. <clears throat> but depending on the rules of the fair, they're going to pay the money for the advertising. And then that money will go to the grand champion or the champion, whoever gets voted on to be the top winner for those prized animals. And then the fair gives the rules on what happens to those animals after they win. Sometimes you go back to the owner along with a really nice hefty check from that advertiser. And that's how they get their name in the paper and they get their picture taken. You know, the, the bank representative uh, gets their picture taken with the bull that won the gri prize grand champion. And then that check goes to the owner. And sometimes the animal goes back to the owner. Sometimes that, depending on the rules, it goes to the meat market <laughs> or it gets auctioned off for slaughter or whatever. You know, the money that comes in is just for advertising. That's how that works. It, it works different in every county. There's different rules for every fair. It's just different depending on the rules that that fair sets for that event. However, Long's daughter, who loved the animal as a family pet, the suit claimed, was reportedly crushed about the goat's fate. So Long resorted to a drastic measure and took back Cedar. It was heartbreaking, Long wrote in a June 27th email explaining her decision to the Shasta County District Fair obtained by the Sacramento Bee. The barn was mostly empty, and at the last minute, I decided to break the rules and steal, oh, it says here, take, steal the goat that night and deal with the consequences later. But the State Fair and the California Department of Food and Agriculture, CFDA, still demanded the mother return Cedar with the fair's chief executive officer reportedly emailing her that, this, that the decision was meant to teach our youth responsibility. That's a dirty word. That's an absolutely dirty word in the world that we live in today. You can't teach these kids about responsibility. You can't teach these kids about following the rules. That's just, that's old. What, what kind of archaic society do you think we live in? Quote, making an exception for you will only teach our youth that they do not have to abide by the rules that are set up for all participants. The CFDA also told the fair CEO that they had to stick to the rules of the state fair. The Sacramento Bee reported that the CEO, this evil, evil CEO, then sent an email to the CFDA official claiming that an organizer of the local community barbecue has contacted her lawyers regarding the theft of the goat donated to the barbecue. A livestock manager of the Shasta District Fair had already started texting Long reportedly warning that there would be serious consequences if she didn't return Cedar to them and even threatening a felony ground count of grand theft. <laughs> I mean, what's this goat worth on the free open farm market? Probably 100 bucks, 200 bucks tops. But see, because that advertiser or whoever advertiser came in and paid almost $1,000 for it, yeah, you're looking at grand theft Goat stealing there. <laughs> what are they, Grand Theft Auto? Grand Theft goat stealing. Mm. Two weeks after Long had taken back the goat, the sheriff from Shasta County, Detective Jeremy Ashby, filed a search warrant affidavit requesting permission to take Cedar. A judge signed off on it, allowing the officers to utilize breaching equipment to force open doorways, entry doors, exit doors, lock containers in pursuit of their target. <laughs> at Bleeding Hearts Farm and Sanctuary in Napa, where Cedar was thought to be, the bee reported. However, Cedar was not there. Instead, he was at an unnamed farm in Sonoma County where Long had sent the animal in order to avoid the slaughterhouse. The sheriff retrieved the goat from that animal rescue, allegedly with no warrant to search and seize Cedar at that specific facility, and they drove him over 200 miles back to Shasta County where he was handed off to unnamed fair personnel for slaughter and eating. You know, there's this thing I heard way back when. Words mean things. They actually mean things. You know, and so if you're going to sign up your animal for a county fair, you ought to look and see and understand. And the, the kid, because the, what's, what's going on here? 
what's happening here is there's a whiny little brat who always gets her way and mama always wants to give that little whiny brat her way. And so she's whining about her pet goat. And so mama has gonna, is probably facing a felony charge because she didn't teach her child, hey, listen, this is how the rules are played. If we're gonna raise farm animals, rule number one of raising farm animals is you don't name your farm animals. <laughs> oh, the world, it hurts. It, it really hurts. Um, listen, I, we have sheep here, okay? I don't have goats because I've stated on many occasions why I don't have goats. Goats are like drunken teenagers. They have the keys to daddy's liquor cabinet, and they're always looking for something to break every day they get up. Um, sheep, on the other hand, completely different story. Um, and so we raise sheep here and the rule is we don't, we have a couple of sheep that the kids have raised out there, but we have slaughtered and butchered enough sheep here that my kids don't care. You know, it's like, it's, it comes time. They, they have, they, they have made, they have made, cause we have one or two sheep that are, that are older. They're like eight years old. And so they're approaching retirement age and they're very good mothers. And chances are those two sheep, cause they were some of our originals are probably going to just go out to pasture and, you know, we'll let them die of old age. But the rest of them, mutton. You are mutton food. That's what you are. I've done videos before on here in the past. There are homesteads out there in YouTube land, homesteading channels out there in YouTube land that name all their animals. All their farm animals are, aren't pets. All they are is food. I'm not sorry. Are they, they're not food. All they are is pets. <laughs> they're just pets. I've done videos on this before. There's a really good chance in the days ahead that food's going to be hard to come by. It's going to be more expensive and it's not going to be as accessible as it once was. At that point, you're going to have to face the hard reality of life. That there's a reason for those animals and you're going to get hungry enough. And one day you're going to get up and be like, you know what? It's time to eat fluffy. <laughs> All right. In other news, food related, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Woman dies, husband in ICU after eating deadly puffer fish, devastated. An 83-year-old Malaysian woman died and her 84-year-old husband is fighting for his life in the hospital after they ate puffer fish last week, according to the news report. The couple's daughter, I'm just going to call her Lee, said her father purchased the puffer fish, a delicacy known to contain extremely potent toxins, from a local fish shop on March 25th. My parents have been buying fish from the same fishmonger, fishmonger, that's what they call the guy, for many years, so my father did not think twice about it. I mean, if a guy gives you a puffer fish, you don't think twice about it? I mean, do you just walk in and be like, hey, give me my, give me my regular. I've been buying you from you for years. He would not have knowingly bought something so deadly to eat and put their lives in danger. Ling Tang Soon, the Health and Unity Committee Chairman for Johar of Southern Malaysia, said shortly after the couple cleaned and cooked the fish for lunch, Lim Su Guan began to shiver and experience breathing difficulties. <laughs> I mean, if you walk into a fish shop and the guy hands you that, are you like, oh yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just take that home and fillet him up and we'll be good to go for lunch. Here's one thing I like about living in the Ozarks. We don't have puffer fish. It's a good deal. Yeah, we have rainbow trout, we have crappie fishing, we have bass fishing, all kinds of cat. There's catfish people. I don't eat catfish. That's one of the things, you know. The Bible says you shouldn't eat fish unless it has both fins and scales. Puffer fish. I don't think this qualifies as fins and scales. <laughs> fins and needles, maybe. Not fins and scales. All right, we'll leave it at that. Hey, guys, check out our merchandise, teespring.com. Also, our advertisers at the end. That's why we don't have any ads in the middle of our videos because that would just be ridiculous. We don't have – I don't like ads in the middle of videos. So our Genesis Gold Group advertiser, if you have a 401K or an IRA and you're stuck in it and you're looking at all the insanity in the world today, it might be a good idea to check in and see if you can get that thing moved over into something actually physical, vaulted, precious metals. All right, check them out. All right, see you next time in the homestead. Bye. This is Grandma. Grandma survived the Great Depression. She survived the Great Depression because her supply chain was local and she knew how to do stuff. Grandma was smart. Grandma told us to make do with what you got. She also said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Homesteading is all about self-reliance and declaring ourselves to be independent from the system. We grow our own food, we raise our own animals, and doing these things helps safeguard our families from the unpredictable world that surrounds us. But what about banking? 
I love being my own power company, but what about being my own bank? Right now, our country is over $30 trillion in debt and rising. The Fed keeps printing money and the Congress won't stop spending money. Staying attached to the modern banking system and their investment vehicles is like putting all of your eggs in one very, very fragile basket. On one side, you have the threat of inflation and your savings value floating away. And the other side is a possible deflationary stock market collapse, just like what happened in the 1930s. Genesis Gold Group is like a basket holding eggs, and these eggs are impossible to break. History shows us that all paper investments have and will return to their intrinsic value eventually. Zero. But gold, silver, and other precious metals have never, ever been worthless. In every collapse throughout history, people have turned back to precious metals to find monetary value. If you have a 401k, an IRA, or a savings account where you're literally watching the purchasing power inflate away, give Genesis Gold Group a call right now, today, this instant. They can develop a strategy for you in the days ahead. I can tell you how I raise sheep, I can tell you how I raise chickens, or the best way to grow tomatoes, or how to hook up a solar panel. But Genesis Gold Group is your best shot at safeguarding your hard-earned savings and investments during this increasingly turbulent time in history. The link and phone number is in the description below or visit their website at genesisgoldgroup.com. And be sure to say you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>